Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 2 Review Conclusion and Homework Presentation, Mary reviews and concludes the Order Principles session and gives some homework to the participants for the following day. Recorded on the 9th of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Have you had a good day? Yeah, everyone seems quite sparky. Learning about compensation and hangovers turned out to be not so bad, hey? That's good. That's great. All right. Well, my job this afternoon is just kind of to put a lid on order principles, to review it with you the last two days, what we've learned, and um, yeah, and open us up to the next couple of days, which is all going to be about soul specific principles. Hopefully, by now, you're starting to see why we've put things in the order that we have. Can you feel how the first two days was all laying the foundations, understanding what's involved in every single law, all of those principles? And this, this lot has been about order principles, so let's have a look at what order principles are all about. I keep reminding you of this diagram just to put everything into context again. Why we're t what we're talking about and why we're talking about it. So you're all very familiar now with this idea that God, ha this infinite personality with attributes and desires and character and personality and the principles that we're discussing with you in every session are a reflection of God's nature. And then these principles govern law and the laws govern Got all of God's creation. So everything we've spoken about in the first two sessions really applies to all of creation. But in this session, we've focused you more specifically, haven't we, on to how it affects you specifically as the owner of, of a human soul or as a human soul. Yeah, okay. So can anyone help me? Remind me what are order principles all about? If our foundation principles were all about, yep, the foundations of the universe, Yvonne, do you want to have a go at telling us what order principles were about? Um, how the human soul fits into the environment. Yep, how it fits into creation, creation. really, doesn't it? Mm. Yep, mm. yeah. Uh, anyone else? Anything further than that? If we go to Glenda. Just here, thanks, Marion. Yeah how the human soul affects everything in the environment. Yes, and we've talked a lot about that, haven't we, with, well, really all of the principles. Governance, responsibility, compensation has all been about, well, what effect am I having on these things around me and how is that effect measured, really, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So order principles, as Yvonne said, were about how the human soul fits into the universe how it affects the universe itself, how it affects lower creations within the universe, and what is the role of the human soul within the universe. So does everyone feel like they have a bit more of an understanding of those things now that we've spoken about those four principles? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so do you want to call them out with me? What were the principles that were covered? What was the first one in this session that we covered? hierarchy and remember Jesus the last the last principle that he discussed at the end of our first session so at the end of the second day was scope and scope you can see sort of laid the foundation for then what we learnt in hierarchy scope kind of enables everything to exist and then hierarchy determines where it where it sits within creation okay what was the next one Governance, and I will review governance properly in a minute. The next one was responsibility. And what was the final one you talked about today? Compensation. Yeah, and it was a, like a lovely discussion, that one. I really enjoyed listening to that myself. Now, what were the two other presentations we had in this session? You heard, you heard them this morning with Jesus. So they were the 
attitudes and emotions relating to human law? And what was the, the one where you got to see Jesus drunk? <laughs> the human law hangover, that's right. <laughs> that'll, that'll be like a little outtake for sure, hey? <laughs> All right. So let's have a think back then just to this morning about this presentation where you looked at the attitudes and emotions relating to law. And remember Jesus introduced you to this law drama where there was all these players in this drama. There was God and the human lawmakers, the human law enforcers, society itself, and then us personally, and drew some contrast there. Who wants to share something that they really noticed in, in that in that discussion that they really hadn't thought about before. No one? Okay, that's all right, I'll talk about it on my own. <laughs> Diane? Um, I noticed that I had a very self-righteous attitude in the human laws yes. compared to God's laws. Yes, and if you think about that, that was a pretty strong theme in that discussion, wasn't it? Where we all, it all, we talked about all these players and all the contrasts relating to how we feel about God and how we feel about laws themselves and how we feel about law enforcers. And really at the end, we really got right the way around to realising wow, I kind of think that I'm pretty superior and I'm a special case and not much should apply to me, hey? That's right. Yeah. You're very self-centred. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Diane. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll review. We'll have a look at what we've got on the slide here. One of the really key points that we wanted you to take away from that was that if humans are to become at one with God they will need to have the same attitudes and emotions about God's laws that God has. So it's a great way to think about really becoming at one with God as well, isn't it? And what did we say automatically happens when we don't have the same attitudes and emotions as God? What are we doing? Sitting. Sitting. Yeah, very good. So whenever we have a different attitude or emotion than, than God does, we are automatically sinning and therefore creating more pain and suffering for ourselves. All right. Okay, this sort of speaks a bit further to what Diane raised, that our attitudes and emotions about law, in particular about God's laws, come from our own experience with human authority which is inconsistent and best and very destructive at worst. And what stood out a little bit for me in that discussion was how much really this idea of human authority, we're, we're almost very comfortable viewing that as law policemen and judges and politicians and so on. But it seemed like from that discussion that our our, our inconsistent and destruct or destructive experience and our hangover or our attitudes and emotions relating to that, that experience really came from much earlier than that, didn't they? Because you almost established in that discussion, didn't you, that there are some laws on earth in our country that aren't that unloving, but we still think we should get around them. <laughs> and so that has to come from earlier in our life, doesn't it? It has to come from that family experience or the early childhood experience. It might not have been our family. It might have been other experiences. Okay. All right. So we said that all of these experiences severely affect our desire to obey law and that that created a hangover that is imposed upon God's laws and which is also the main creator of human unhappiness and pain. We can see this theme coming through, can't we? we we're starting in, this, in the last assistance group and now in this one again, we're giving you a lot of information about what is the source of your pain, your current pain and suffering. There's a lot of ways to, to understand where it's coming from. Yeah. All right. Okay. And this last slide was just about the way that we, uh, we frequently justify and minimise all of our attitudes really um, that oppose obedience to God and God's laws. And we want to hold on to this belief, don't we, that God is punishing and wrathful. That also came through in your discussion with Jesus, 
that a lot of the time it's sort of a will-based choice to hold on to this, to this belief, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So, human law hangover. This was very much related to the previous discussion, the attitudes. What did you find really stood out for you in that hangover? So not so much your personal experiences here, but something that you sort of learnt as a lesson from, from that discussion. Can anyone think of anything? Natalie? That God wants to like, benefit everyone with the laws that God's created and humans don't do that necessarily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, that's a very powerful point, wasn't it? That, that um, God has created all of these laws that are actually for our benefit and for our happiness. And there was this contrast between how on earth very often laws aren't made for that purpose. But even a further point from that is, gee whiz, Aren't we crazy to just keep rebelling against God's laws, given that they're all there for our benefit? Yeah. Jesus also brought up this really lovely thing about your heart. What did he say about your heart? Anyone? Rita? To have an open-seeking heart. That's what God wants us to do. He did talk about that. That was a little bit later on in the next talks. But what did he say, Ithalia, about in terms of the law and your heart. So if you just keep your hand up, yeah. That eventually we're aiming to have the law written in our hearts. Like, yeah. 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 And he said this cool thing that I reckon would be like awesome on a T-shirt, which was like, be your own law enforcer. <laughs> 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 and that's kind of what it's like when you have the law written in your heart, isn't it? You're, you're really your own law enforcer. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, again, I won't spend too long on this, excuse me, because I really want to go to the principles with you guys. So just that there's a big difference between human laws and God's laws, and the hangover makes us want to rebel, basically. Sin is generated by this desire, <laughs> and each sin, again, creates more pain and suffering for us. All right. So let's look at these principles. I've got a bit more time today, which is great, so I can actually hear from you guys about what the principles are all about. Let's just quickly again look, though, at this, this idea, the relationship between scope and hierarchy. And as we go, we'll see that scope sets, sets us up for hierarchy. Hierarchy really then enables responsibility or indicates responsibility and that governance flows on from responsibility and compensation is really a way of enforcing responsibility, isn't it? So, but let's look again here at scope. Scope determines the existence of the universe itself, everything within the universe, how everything communicates with all elements of the universe and also the inbuilt soul bait based mechanisms via which the highest creation which in, within the universe is able to communicate with God. So that's pretty thorough definition there, isn't it? And you can see why we had it in foundation principles, because it's really, it's, it's determining the existence of everything. Then when we came on to hierarchy, it's talking about the position or place of each creation. Yeah. So... What did you guys get from the hierarchy talk? What did you learn there? Anyone? Am I asking you to stretch a bit at the end of the day, Marion? Um, the higher the creation, the more complex and the more laws that are involved to create the relationships to bring the scope through. Yes, yep, yep. So the higher the creation is, well, actually, the more complex the creation is, the higher it falls in the hierarchy. And also, that means that more complex laws are applied to that creation. So we had a lot of discussion about simple creation versus more complex creation, and then simple laws joining together to create more complex laws that then govern the higher creation, which is pretty... Like, imagine if you had to design that at home in your back shed. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it blows my mind what God has done, hey? Like, it's just incredible that there's a whole system of not only allowing for the potential of more complexity, but automatically laws are more complex governing that, and you don't even have to really know much about it. It's just happening automatically, and if you honour the principle, then you'll respect that that is going to happen and not get in the way so much. We try and elbow our way into hierarchy a lot, don't we? That's a good thing for you guys to think about for your homework. All right, was there anything else that you guys uh, noticed with hierarchy, Bruce? I'll just get a drink of water. Um, the higher laws govern the lower or higher creations govern the lower creations? Yes, they have. we introduced this idea a little bit about... Um, external law external rules into oh Bruce didn't stand up whoop oh, even I missed it Bruce um, <laughs> yep yep you're right that there's a, the hierarchy of law and the laws are actually more powerful the higher the law and therefore have more of an effect on the lower laws yep and so on with the higher creations against the lower creations or above the lower creations yep all right one more thing that you guys uh, learned or noticed, and I'll just have a look at things I noted down to mention with you guys. Glenn? That each of, we were talking elements like in water, um, the, each have their own components. When you add them together, it adds to the um, higher. So they've got their own um, would we'll just say identity, you know. Yeah, well, they've yeah. got their own inbuilt yes. rules. Yeah, their own inbuilt rules. Yes, yeah. yes. So then once you put them together, then it equals the higher. Yeah, they, yeah. it forms a new creation that yeah. has new inbuilt rules and yeah. new external rules, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we talked a bit, didn't we, about properties and energy and yeah. all these kind of terms. Yeah. We'll see if we've got them on my slide. I, I don't think I do. But... Um, Let's see, what, let's see what we said here. Hierarchy principles determine the hierarchy of law by the complexity of law. So you, we've already covered that. And the hierarchy of creation by the complexity of creation. They ensure more complex creation is governed by more complex laws, which is the bit that I go wow about because, you know, that is happening automatically just based on this principle. And then I'm doing Jesus. Uh, <laughs> they ensure higher creations and law, and this is the part that I wanted to go over with you guys, higher creations and law exert more power, have more energy, and also more complex properties. So remember we introduced those three terms to you, didn't we? This idea that something has power, energy, and properties. Does anyone remember anything about that? That might be a bit Um, remember we said that energy is the information and we talked about emotion being a part of energy as well. So that's something for you guys to think about for your homework. Remembering that energy is, is energy, emotion, thought, communication, relationship or interplay between creation. So the more, the higher the creation and laws exert more um, sorry, they have more power. <laughs> sorry, they have more energy and more power associated with that energy. Yeah, But we don't need to get too bogged down on it. You've got it in your notes. But remember, part of your homework is going to be thinking about how am I in or out of harmony with this principle. Okay. Let's have a look at governance. Again, I'll just check my time. Doing good. All right. So... Remember we talked about governance being like we talked about it in relation to the self-aware being, our human soul. So there's actually more we could say about governance, but we really honed you in on this idea of being discussed in relation to self-aware beings with free will, which each of us are one. Other beings are controlled by governance principles, but the control is instinctual rather than will-based. So that... This idea of our will came up a lot, didn't it, in this, in this order session and how the will is like the wild card in the mix. Suddenly, because we have will, there's, 
so many other possibilities and different laws come into play because we're not just governed by instinct. Not, everything's not automated in the way that things happen for us. And therefore, we can have different effects and there's different things that, that start operating upon us. And as we learned in the next principle, there's more responsibilities associated with that. Okay? Okay, and the human soul, not the body or the spirit body, is a self-aware being with the ability to express free will depending upon development. So let's see what you guys took from governance principles. Do you have any yet, Janine? The more I live in harmony with God's laws, the more governance power my soul will have. Yes, yes. Yeah, and in fact, that was the definition of power, wasn't it? The, um, sorry, of development, that the more we're in harmony with God's principles, the greater our development, and then the greater our development, the more power we have, the more governance we have, sorry. Yes, yeah, very good. Yeah, cool. Anyone else? Anything that stood out for them about governance? Yvonne? Everything in the universe is under God's governance. Yes. 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 Yeah. Governance principles ensure that everything is under God's authority. That God's laws govern and control all of creation. So again, this is kind of where God doesn't mess around, hey? He's like, no, I've created something. I'm governing all of it. All of my laws govern what happens in this creation. But what was the special point, though, about us? That God's gifted us something about governance. Uh, if we go to Suzanne. Just keep your hand up here. Yeah. Because we're the highest creation and because of that we were given free will and therefore we have real responsibility for everything that we do. Yes, that's, <coughs> that's in responsibility. So, yes, it's, we're leading to that with this point. So, if we come to Amber. Um, we've been given the opportunity to have role responsibility. Now we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, if we go to Robert down the back, it's true, but that's in our next principle. Uh, the human soul automatically governs. Yes. Uh, whether we know it or not. Whether we know it or yeah. not, because we are this highest of God's creations, thanks Rob, because we are the highest of God's creations, then we're automatically governing. But there's, let's have a look at what the slide says. We've been given the, uh, God's, it's almost like a gift. God's allowing us to share, to share in governance, which is pretty special because it actually paves the way for these things that you've started to talk about in terms of responsibility and compensation. And that is actually like a big benefit to us because we get to be these self-aware beings, understanding what it is to create and understanding love in a very sort of uh, self-aware way. Whereas all of the others of God's creations, remember, we learned in foundation principles that all of God's creation experiences some of God's love. We can do it in a very conscious way, in a way where we understand what love is. And this is all enabled, really, by this gift that God is allowing us to share in governance and the follow-on principles that we learn about, we learnt about. We will learn about for the rest of the week. Okay. <laughs> yes. And this final point was that each human soul automatically governs, but the power of governance is determined by development. And if we go back to the first point that Janine made, our development is determined by what? Can anyone remember? I just said it earlier. Felix? Uh, how much we're in or out of harmony with God's uh, principles. Yes, with God's principles and laws. So coming here this week, learning about all these principles, assessing where you're in or out of harmony with the principles uh, gives you a good understanding of your development, doesn't it? 
like I said at the, in your homework review at the start of this session, gives you information. And information kind of empowers choice, doesn't it? You can make different choices. Yeah. OK, lovely, guys. All right, now on to responsibility. I love that everyone was like, hold on responsibility, because that's <laughs> Jesus and I really wanted to, to help you become more aware of what responsibility is all about. So again, just a reminder that we discuss responsibility principles, especially because we are, we are a human soul with a human will. So they're will-based principles, and we discuss them in relation to self-aware beings with free will. The human soul is a self-aware being with the ability to express free will depending on development, and as such is the highest creation. So this is how we're the highest creation, because we only have this, well, there's many things that only we have, but this is part of one of the things that we, this, this opportunity to share in governance, the responsibility, the compensation, these are all things, they're applied especially to us because we are the highest creation. Okay. All right. Now, you guys had a really great discussion with Jesus in the Q&A about this, this idea of self-responsibility versus role responsibility. Do you all remember that yesterday afternoon? And this acknowledgement of nature. But I really want to go over this self-responsibility definition with you guys because it's a part of your homework to, to have some reflection about that. And we really want you to take away the, the essence of that from this week if you can. So, let's go over it again. Self-responsibility is the law-based requirement. That's the first key part of that definition. So, this is a law-based requirement of each of us. And that means that each law is really operating to enforce self-responsibility upon us. Now, many of us are rebelling against the operation of the laws. But God's laws are actually designed to enforce it. The laws require it of us. So at some point in our future, we will become self-responsible. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take because of this free will wildcard. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, so that's the first key thing to think about. It's the law-based requirement of self-awareness to seek truth, to seek love, and to seek understanding of all principles of love and law. Now, the, again, the second key part of this definition is the seeking. So this is not a like, yeah, I'll have to, or they pointed it out, and now I'm aware. <laughs> Jeez, I can't deny that truth anymore. <laughs> like far out, I keep coming to these talks, why am I here again? Now there's more stuff I know. You know, it's not that attitude. Seeking is a desire-based feeling. It's like, hey, tell me more. It's that little childlike look in your eyes of like, really? Can I know more about that? How am I going to find out more about that? So you're seeking, this seeking truth, seeking love, seeking to understand all these principles that we're discussing with you this week. Okay, so that's the second part. The third crucial part of this definition is it is the loving ownership and expression of one's will, desire, passion, emotion, attitudes, intentions, thoughts and actions in harmony with God's principles and laws. And again, let's look at the verbs. The loving ownership and expression. Now, the truth is a lot of us are still avoiding expression. We're avoiding our will. We're avoiding our passion and emotion. We're, we're wanting others to take responsibility for them, or we're, you know, we're saying, oh, it's too risky to get let go of this facade, you know, I don't want to own up to who I really am. And so this ownership of who we are is really crucial to self-responsibility. And being responsible for the loving expression, so in harmony with God's principles and laws, the loving expression of ourselves, 
That's a key part of self-responsibility. So it's not just giving up sin, although not, not freely expressing yourself is a sin, essentially. But I mean, it's not just saying, oh, I'll let go of my injury and my error. It's also saying, no, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to lovingly express it and no one else is going to have to work to know me because I'm being me and I'm expressing me. That's a key part of self-responsibility as well. Okay. And of course, we get assigned role responsibility when we're, oh, we got rubbed off, but Jesus had the, the what is it, baby? Digital. Digital expression of self-responsibility, the plus one. Yep, then we'll get some role responsibility from God, hey? But it's not just that, is it? It's not just all of those big major things I said in role responsibility. What was the second part of what we had to do before we are assigned role responsibility? Yvonne? Nature. What about nature? Oh, that... Um that not only were we self-responsible, but also the role responsibility was in line with our nature, our personality and attributes and characteristics, It will be, but what do we have to do with regards to our nature? If we go to Mike okay. on the other side. We need to have the desire. To? to be of service. No. Oh. To, we need to have the desire to actually embrace our nature. Yeah. We, w we want to have the awareness of who we are. What, am, what kind of character am I anyway? What do I like? What's, what's, what interests me? You know, am I in, in uh, Arabic, in Syria, they say, instead of saying hello, they say, what colour are you? Shlonak. And so it's kind of like, well, what colour am I? Am I a fuchsia soul or a yellow soul? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Tangent, Mary, Mary, tangent. I must be playful today like Jesus. Okay, all right. <laughs> Let's go through just a quick summary because we've got a, yeah, that's good. All right. Responsibility principles force us to be self-responsible. So just like I said, it's a law-based requirement of us that we will become self-responsible. And we can act in harmony with the law and get there quicker or we can kick up a fight and it'll take us a long time. But it will be forced. Okay, but then in addition, it's not just a forcing. Along the way, there's a lot of encouragement that the laws provide for us to get to that state. And they allow God to reward true self-responsibility with role responsibility. And this is a nice way to put it, isn't it? Role responsibility is a compensatory gift given to those with self-responsibility. Sound okay? And we'll get to your homework in a minute because a lot of it will be based around responsibility principles. All right, compensation you've just heard all about, you could tell me what it's all about. What did you learn in compensation principles? Can you give me a few points? You, you could probably read the, the slide, uh, Alan. <laughs> Well, the one that hit home for me was really that there's good things in compensatory and I'd never really reflected much on it much. Yep. I was mostly focused on, well, how big is the list of sin and how quick do I want to get through it? Yes. And not looking at good deeds for my family or my brothers and sisters and, yep. and myself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that every time we're actually in harmony with the principle, there's a, there's a, a pleasant compensatory effect. Yep. Yeah, and the more even we develop in self-responsibility, there's pleasant, the more we desire to be ourselves, I suppose, there's a, there's a pleasant compensatory effect as well. Remember in love principles, we pointed out that, that when, you are, when you're just loving, when you're a loving expression of yourself, you actually encourage development in other people, which is, and you have positive compensatory effects for that as well. Yeah. Okay, one more if we go to Nat. Yep. I was really excited to learn that compensation isn't a punishment, but it's actually to help me adjust my feelings rather than punish me for my behaviour. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
it's very, it's very lovely to come to grips with, isn't it? The fact that it's all there as an expression of love to help me correct myself. And remember, Jesus brought up again this idea that we're acting upon the heart. God is wanting us to change in our heart, isn't he? He's, he's desiring this lasting change, which means that the compensatory effect acts on what's on in our heart, whether that's a, a sin or a, a lack of sin, a loving-based uh, state within us. So it's not just our actions and our words, but it's our thoughts and feelings as well. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we know that it's a reward, compensation is a reward provided to the soul and its environment for self-responsibility that we talked about or the corrective penalty enforced upon the soul and its environment for the disobedience to God's principles. So I reckon that says it. And it's there to educate us about sin, provide the rewards. It's the measure, it ensures that self-responsibility is the measure for compensation, and you had some good discussion about that in the Q&A. Um, it forces us to be responsible and accountable. And it's consistent and predictable. And remember in Foundation Principles, we talked a lot about how God's trying to help us be free of fear, to feel safe and secure. And really compensation, you can see again that God is doing that for us with this principle and with the laws under this principle. Can you see what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is the end of our order principles session. I'd like to give you some homework about that now. Okay, it's just a review of what we've talked about. Perhaps before we get on to homework, I will just quickly go over these. I've got a few minutes. Order principles, as I said, form the foundation of the human soul specific principles. So that's coming up in your next two days. So just like foundation principles formed the foundation for this session, this session is really setting you guys up, preparing you to understand the principles in our last two days. So they, they're really building upon each other. Um, and are you feeling like you, you're starting to integrate some of the foundation principles with what you've learned in the last two days? <laughs> It's okay, it's new, hey? Like, and that's something that Jesus and I wanted to say to you, that this is like, we are giving you a lot of information here, aren't we? We get, we're, we're trying to open you up to a lot of ideas that we've previously never really talked about in that much detail. Although if you think back to a lot of things Jesus has said, you'll, you start to see where he's coming from a lot, hey? because he's operating by these principles all the time, but he's just never laid them out as clearly. So don't be hard on yourselves, like if it's a bit overwhelming at times or you're still going, not sure how it all fits together, because it takes some time to open up to this. And if you're sincere, you'll be able to review all of this material, all of your outlines, and you'll have a really good basis for your next assistance group, which is all about sin. Okay, <laughs> um, these principles that we've just talked about these last two days, they do again allow us to understand more about God's personality and nature, don't they? We're starting to learn more about what God values and why God values it. And again, we're learning more, well, what is love? Love encompasses all these principles that we're learning about. So it's starting to get easier to, to, as Jesus pointed out just before, to understand when am I loving and when am I unloving. If I'm breaking a principle, well, I haven't hit the mark of love yet. Okay. And prob the point I wanted to highlight was that these order principles ensure that the laws actually honour us as the highest of God's creations. Without supersede, We can't supersede God's authority, though. God's still the ultimate authority, but there's a certain honour placed upon us and this, this governance and responsibility and compensation means that, you know, we've got some power here in this universe. Okay, all right, now let's do homework. All right. So we've talked to you about four principles and 
as you did in the first two days, we'd like you to answer the question, how am I living in or out of harmony with each of those order principles? So in and out of harmony with hierarchy, governance, responsibility and compensation. So same deal as last time. Does anyone have any questions about that? No? You kind of got the hang of that by the time you went through your first eight principles? Yep. All right. Remember that homework's only beneficial if I learn something from it. So <laughs> it's not about just sort of regurgitating, uh, sort of trying to get, get marks in your book or whatever. It's really, this is, we designed this to help you learn, nothing else, nothing else. And also, it's not about, what I noticed a bit in, with you guys with the last homework is sometimes you see stuff about yourself, then you get a bit down on yourself and like hard on yourself or self-punishing and that's not what this is all about. This is not about making you feel like it's the end of the world. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's the beginning of the possibility of change. <laughs> that's how we feel, you know. Um, so, yes. And also, the other thing I thought to mention was, what I notice is some of you though, who I've known for a long time, you do have a little bit of a habit of going, all right, while I'm here at the group, I'll look at these principles or look at the homework and I'll list out all the things I know are sin in me. And then I'll put up my hand and I'll say all the things that are sin in me and maybe even have a bit of a cry while I'm saying it. But what I notice is over years, it's the same answers. So what's that telling me? And it's the same tears. So what's it telling me? Rita? That I haven't changed. Yep, that we haven't changed. What else does it tell me? Die? <laughs> it's a good one for me. Yeah. Um, that I don't have a sincere desire to change. And um, I've still got a lot of work to do looking at my will and how I feel feel about love, truth, God and all that sort of stuff. Sure, sure. Definitely that's a part of it. But I feel there's also a little bit of a part of it where it's, it gets to be a bit of a facade of humility. Do you see what I mean by that? And you just got to watch that. I'm not saying everyone who shared in their last homework had that attitude at all because some of you I felt were very sincere in looking at things that you'd previously never acknowledged to yourself. But I just do notice sometimes there's some of you who feel almost in a bit of a comfortable, like, here's my sin, um, but there's no real sincerity to, to look at it beyond the group. So just something to think about. Again, not to, not to get too hung up about it, but just, just, to, just to be aware, okay, I'm writing this down in my book and how do I really feel about it? And, is this really just an exercise to have something to say rather than to feel heartfelt about it? My feeling is like if you have one really sincere kind of uh, realisation of where you're out of harmony with the principle and a, a strong desire to deal with that, then that's like awesome. That's, a, that's already you're, you're wanting to change something, you know. But if you sort of have this comfortable list of your sins that you're used to sort of telling yourself about and berating yourself and self-punishing yourself about and never really changing, that's not really productive use of your time, is it? Is everyone all right about that? Hmm. Okay. All right. Last questions in the homework are all to do with responsibility. So they are, what do I think it means to be fully self-responsible? How am I taking full responsibility for self? And would God give me role responsibility right now, given my level of self-responsibility? <laughs> okay, if, who's saying no to that question straight away? Already said it, yep. Pretty much everyone. All right, well, don't stop there. Go, okay, why? Why not? Why wouldn't God? You know? Yeah. Dave? Yep. Um, just with the first question, is it 
are you asking it in the way that we look at actual our opinion of what we think self-responsibility is or are we just reflecting on what you guys have been teaching us about self-responsibility? Good question. It's a good thing to contrast, isn't it? Mm. It, it, it? Sort of, it's interesting to think about what we kind of have this internal idea of what it means to be fully self-responsible um, and then contrast it with what we've been sharing with you in the last mm. couple of days. What I, it's fine to do that actually as an exercise, but what um, we're probably driving at with this question is more about, so you've got the definition in your, in your outlines. Now, what does that look like in practice in my life? Okay. Yep. Does that make sense? Like yep. with sort of your concrete life example? Yeah. Jesus, did you want to add to that? Yeah, that's what you feel as well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. No worries. Any other questions about the responsibility section? No. Okay. All right. And just following on from my last comment where I said about your, your homework and being careful of having your facade around it, I just also want to say I'm not saying that you should be through your issues by now. That's definitely not what I mean. You know, I'm not saying, oh, you've been talking about that sin for a, for a while now, why aren't you over it? That's not my feeling at all, you know. I just mean sometimes I notice that some of you, um, it's the self-punishing flavour that comes through that tells me that, you're not willing to give up that self-punishment yet and that's stopping you from, from working through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So any other questions about any of the homework? Rita? I had a question written down before. Is it a question about content or about the homework? I think it's about the homework, be your own law in for the versus self-punishment. Where is... Um well, I think that's pretty clear. When you be your own law enforcer, it just means that the laws written on your heart, God's laws... Oops, the God's so basically laws we can't be yet our own law enforcer in our current state. No, I'm saying that when you have a heartfelt desire to live by God's principles and laws, you are automatically your own law enforcer. God is still the ultimate authority. God still is enforcing the laws, but it's just... In, in little bits, we can be our own law enforcer. Do I not get it? Well, you're your own... You're you're your own law enforcer to the extent that you're living in or out of harmony with God's principles that are in your heart. Yeah. So the key is not to get too hung up on the phrase. It was just a catchy way, that the phrase that Jesus said. It's more about the fact that God enforces all the laws. You're either in or out of harmony with the principles which puts you in or out of harmony with God's laws. So you're either sinning or you're not. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, this is the end of our order principles session. The next session will be human soul specific principles. And in that, we're going to talk to you about principles that determine the laws that govern your potentials. So that's exciting for me. Um, the potentials of our human soul within the universe and how we progress or evolve or regress or devolve. So we'll see you in a day's time. The next presentation will be again with me. We'll do reminders of this session and look at your homework. And again, I'd love to do the reminders of this session through hearing about your homework. Thanks so much for your participation the last couple of days and have a good break day. Um, Lena and Igor, do you want to remind about your thing tomorrow? Yep. Yeah, just to remind the uh, little Barbie at the small pool down there and you don't have to bring anything, we've got it covered. So, light breakfast, 10 a.m. Okay, thanks guys, see ya.